These are, or should I say, these is the walls. Them is, is the walls. Here are the walls. Here are the walls, so they are. You can moan, but no one's gonna drive you home. This time you're on your own for a change in the dark. Watch out for the That's the new single from a band uh, from Dublin, I do believe, or maybe it's not Dublin, it's anyway, down south, anyway, called The Walls. It's called It Goes Without Saying, and that's been released on April the 6th uh, this year, of course, and it's from an album called Stop the Lights. And, of course, The Walls, I'm a big fan of theirs. Uh, I think they're undoubtedly one of the most talented bands in Ireland, and, of course, consequently, will go nowhere. So, anything wrong with your headphones? You right? Well, I'm, I'm, just, uh, I'm huh? just happy that you like The Walls, because I... Do you like them, too? Well, I discovered them, and I gave you the album. No, you didn't. I'm surprised that you Playing it, yes. No, you I, did I, not. I says there's a there's a group. They I've sent, been playing them for years. I, I gave it to you. When? No, um, I would say nineteen forty eight. No, about three years ago or so. And I, they sent me their a copy, and I I liked discovered it. them before that. No, and I said to you, I said to you, listen to this here, and you said that's very good. Are you going to play it? And I, I says know. I don't know. He says well, if you're not going to play it, I'll take it. I'll I'll play it. It's too good for you. You know, there are and listeners out there. There are listeners out there who think that maybe perhaps ninety percent of this program is made up of petty bickering. 
<laughs> that, that proves I'm right. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the program. It is a Thursday. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is 08459 555678. The email address is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk. Only my eyes see those. The texts are seen by everyone. Therefore, I ignore them like dirt. They are at 0877. What's the, what's the text number? 0871? Is that it? Is it? Uh, 81771. Oh, it's not 81771. It's nearly my mobile number. No, oh, 81771. 81771 is a text number. Don't worry about that. There's a lot of talk in the papers and indeed in the general media about pandas. Have you been following the panda uh, phenomenon? No. Are they, do you not know what's we, happening? A couple they of put, pandas. They, they want were, them to mate. They do. Uh, and they seem to be hesitant. Privacy. They seem to be. Uh, apparently, a man has been poking one of their tails with the bamboo. All right. You see, if somebody poked my tail with a band, it would put me off, yeah. to be honest. Anyway, a gentleman writes to me on that very subject. Were uh, you ever involved in anything like that? Mating, no, no, let me mating pandas? No, 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 let me explain. No, no, I've, no, I've done many as a thing, but I've never no. mated with a panda, no. No. A man, I, I would hate to see the result. Be a black and white minstrel. A man once called for me. <laughs> oh, did he? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did he? I was a friend of mine, no. right? Yeah. And he said to me... He How called, would you like to mate with something? No, eh, well, that's basically, you know, he's, he, and he had a dog with him. And he said to me, he says, come on, Coyle, he says, I, you, I, I, need, I need you here for an hour or two. And he went away and he had his dog on the lead and we were called to this other person's house and we got their dog and he handed me their dog. There's the dog, you see. So I was had a dog, he had a dog, and we went away for a walk away into the country. And he says, I want the two... Why I was here, the two dogs to meet. Yeah. And he says what? He says that's the the bitch that you have. You yeah. see. Well, did you have like cigarettes with you and stuff and like then, that? And, and we walked need? and walked and we talked. You bought a brandy. And I, said, maybe? and I says, what? When? When does this? When happen? does this happen? What? 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 You I were said, the no. wrong man. You were the wrong man to give that dog. Absolutely. To. He said, I have a spot yeah. picked out. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the name of the dog? And, Spot. <laughs> and we walked and walked. We came to this rather little secluded lane. A little bar, a bower. Right? Yeah. And he says, right, let her off, Coyle. And right. I, I so what did you unleash? I, I unleashed. The hounds of hell? Yes. Yeah. And, and the yeah. two dogs, you know, they did the usual, you know, sniffing around one another. And then they, they started to go their own sort of direction. Not not wander off or anything, but still stayed with us. You know, and In other words, there was no sign of any how's your father. Exactly. And your mother wasn't working. Exactly. And I said to my friend, I said, well, how long have we got to stay here? He says, until, you know. How's your father? Bob's and your it, uncle. Yeah. And it got very, very boring. It would. Very, very boring. Because you kept looking at the wee dogs and you wondered, you know, when? You know, yeah, well, ever. Would you not have done something to maybe advance the procedure? Well, I said to him, I said, I said maybe we should go away. You know, you know, we should walk down the end of the lane or something, uh-huh. you know. Lead no, I was thinking something in terms of... No. Well, you did it with the bull. <laughs> no, nothing. You've done it before. It's not something you haven't done before. So we... Uh, yeah? Uh, nothing happened. No. And we, we hitched the dogs up again and took them home. But it was, it's, it's very embarrassing. It's very awkward even for, for, for a human. You should have brought a couple of blindfolds and then the dogs would have been happy enough. Just because you're standing watching them. I mean, you know, were you ever yourself. involved in that? Did it's you like ever stand in your bedroom at night going, hey, hey, what about you? Go ahead. Work away. Never mind me. I'm going to lead here. <laughs> anyway, uh, Jerry, <clears throat> I, I had an awful dream last night. Oh, did you? No, it was a, no, no, a very, very short dream. Yes. Seconds. I had a dream too. Well, I'll tell you. I was in Newry. Oh, yeah. Aye. And I was walking from Uri to home. Uh huh. So, hell of a walk. Think about it. That's a long walk. Yeah. Newry to Londonderry. And I was walking. Yes. And car lights were, were dazzling me, and I didn't know mm. where I was going. Mm-hmm. And my legs wouldn't work, and I didn't not. know if I was out in the middle of the road That's or where mile. I was. That's 100 miles, you know. And I started to slow up, and I couldn't get walk, and mm-hmm. I got very, very. Dizzy. This is going to take long. No, and I, I realised then I was uh, I was on a walking towards a grass verge, and cars were coming at me in mm-hmm. all directions, and I, I passed out. And you woke up, and there was President Kennedy lying dead beside you. <laughs> no, I did. I, I, I was, when I did wake up, it was frightening. 
Hmm. I, I, I didn't like it at all. I dreamt I was in a restaurant and across the restaurant, and just coming to me now that you mentioned the dream, and across the restaurant from me was Kylie Minogue and a man. And the man came over and talked to me. And I said, is that Kelly Minogue with you? Yeah. He says, it's none of your business. That's, that's good. That was, a, that was the right answer for you. What kind of a dream is that? I don't know. And he kept talking to me for ages. He says, I want to talk to Kelly. And he said, no. And she kept looking over and smiling at me and he wouldn't let me go over and talk to her. You know, that, that's I think man. that kind of people, you know, probably keep, just the kind of people keep you back. Anyway, I noticed that lady giant pandas are only receptible to man giant pandas for two days of the year. Did you know that? No. Two days a year. He did to get in quick. Apparently, this causes relationship problems and that the lady panda often loses interest because a man panda is so inept in his boudoir technique due to lack of practice. There have only been two days in the year where he can try things out. As a man who's been married for 30 years, I shall pass no further comment on this subject except to say I rest my case. May I recommend that the zookeepers chuck a bottle of Chauvelin Blanc Shove it, get it? Uh, Shove it on Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Right. Chardonnay. Shove it on Blanc into the Lady Panda's enclosure and open the cork. This should be the trick. Anyway, the ma- however, the man panda will have to put up with the Lady Panda singing ABBA songs. Da-da-da. Give me an ABBA song. Right. Uh, I can't remember an ABBA song. Uh, does your mother know? Does your- no, it's too That's hard. Too uh, Waterloo, 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 Waterloo. Do- Waterloo. Anyway, she'll have to put up with the lady panda singing ABBA songs very badly with her mates before stumbling through the door at 3 a.m. and then demanding breakfast in bed at lunchtime the next day. But still worth waiting up for, eh? Eh? Know what I mean? Ken regards. That's David Attenborough writes to me. But you know, no matter what goes on in the panda world, no matter how many Chinese bears are sent over here to mate, there will still be set dancing in Kelly Clower. And thank goodness for it. You see, this is one of the things you can depend on. Did you see David Frost the other night? Uh, what was he doing? He was interviewing Muhammad Ali. Oh, I did see that. Yeah, it was about talking to BBC on uh, BBC4. Was that it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was par- a part of that. Pro- very good programme. It just showed you different interviews of people talking to people. No. It wasn't that, no. No, it was okay. David Frost talking to Ali now, uh, Ali then. Oh, no, Ali now, Ali then? Yeah. Uh-huh. No, I missed that, funny enough. I've seen him talking to Ali before in a ring somewhere. Yeah, that, 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 yeah. that, that, that was, was very Ali. good. That was the Ali but before. It would be they quite co- sad to see him talking to Ali now because obviously That's... a shadow of his former self. No, parking. believe it or not. Believe it or not, it was uh, it was quite heartening because I thought he was he was in a worse state than what he really is. Well, do you know what I no, suggest? No, no. I suggest that that was not recorded very recently. I suggest that, John. I suggest well, that you may we... have you may have seen something that was recorded earlier. Because, well, what's earlier? Uh, maybe four or five years ago. No. Uh, why? I wouldn't think so. Well, you see, because they had to use they had to use subtitles titles when when Ali spoke. Mm, okay. You, you couldn't I'll, I'll really you, understand. I'll them. give you the benefit of the doubt, but I think I say, I say it may have been more recent than four or five years. Maybe two. Oh yeah. Maybe two. Mm. Anyway, listen. There's set dance in Kelly Clacher. Oma Traditional Dancing Club are organising a set dance in Cayley in a Dunalaba Centre in uh, Killyclaher on Easter Monday evening from 8 to 11 o'clock. Just goes to show you that sometimes things never change. Right. Dancing is to the Swallow's Tail Cayley Band. Isn't that a great name for Cayley Band? Uh-huh. The Swallow's, Swallow's Tail Cayley yeah. Band, also known as SWAT. <laughs> well, Jacinta in Belfast wants to know something that's close to your heart. Yes, what's that? Uh, when is the Fiddler's Green Festival on? Oh, I don't know. It's usually around summertime, isn't it? Um, I've and been there. Where is occasions. Henry McCullough playing in Belfast in April? Oh, Henry's doing no, some kind of. No, Henry's doing some kind of. Henry's doing some kind of gig. There's a gig on in the. Uh, oh, one of those Titanic things. Oh, I don't know what it's called. I'll, I've got some email about it. I'll try and hunt it out and maybe impart the information to the Should people out there. When you just turn around to your left. Uh, because maybe. I don't know which email it is. It's, there's a whole lot of emails there. I don't know which Would one it is. Would you not just type in Henry McCullough? And it'll no, pop because up? it's me. He's mentioned in passing in an oh, email. Right. Morning, Jerry Face. For some strange reason, I was listening to yesterday's program on the iPlayer, and in the middle of it, st- it stopped, and a notice came up my came up on my screen claiming insufficient bandwidth to stream this program. Can you explain, please? I can't explain that. What's your number? That should not have happened. And why do you not mention the Peace Bridge? The coil and the foil. That has never caught on, you know. Do you remember we were looking for That's names right. for the Peace Bridge? That's and somebody right. suggested the coil and the foil, which yeah. is a very, very good name for it. I might because try it looks it. like a coil, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. And you're a coil. And, I'm, I'm and you're on the foil. Yeah. And you're on the coil and the foil. I might go for it again. Might go for it again. Resurrect it. Yes, this yeah. is your chance because yeah. I've, I've already got Stroke City. 
I'm all right. Yeah. On my on my tombstone, you know what it'll say. What? I've got a cousin called Kevin. Oh. <laughs> no, on my tombstone, it'll say, here lies Jerry Anderson, 48 years of age. He invented Stroke City. That's what it'll say. Nothing else that I do will make any difference. I am writing from... Well, it'll Sony- not say you once played in the chess, man. No, it won't say that. It'll say he changed the name of his city. A man was talking about you last night to me. Was there? Is that right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, a man said to me... Detective said, Sergeant? He said to me... He said, What's that? A, a Janice tap on the screen, uh, oh, okay. indicating there's a call. I hear her, yeah. It scared you that, didn't it? But the man you. said to me, he says, um, tell us this and tell us no more. Somebody said, tell me this and tell me no uh, more. And uh, he says, as Anderson, does he really play the guitar? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, he's been in bands all his life. Mm-hmm. And he says, I hear him talking about the bands from time to time, and I hear him talking about the show bands and all that. He says, I said, as a matter of fact, uh, um, the new, the <laughs> not the new Musical Express. What do you call it? I remembered it last night. Melody Maker. No, uh, no, wasn't the Melody? Stop Spotlight. Spotlight. Irish magazine. I, I, Irish magazine. Spotlight yeah. voted yeah. him the best bass, bass player bass in the play- w- in the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. In Ireland. And he said, "Is that so?" He says, "Well, the reason I asked you, he said, I never really believed him because he tells that many <laughs> lies in the radio. So I never believed that he could play a guitar or not." He says, "But what made me think that he could play." was I heard a conversation once with a man phoned up to ask about a chord. Mm-hmm. And he said, he started to talk about chords. Yeah. He said, and I play a guitar myself. He says, mm-hmm. And I said to myself, this wee knows, knows, uh, he knows what he's talking about. He knows about, yeah. what he's talking about. I've never talked about this, but I want to tell you now about my career as a guitar player as opposed to being a bass guitar player. Uh, we know about no, it. No, you don't. You don't. We, you don't. You don't. Jazz, sitting up, up the stairs. No, no, you don't know, but my influence is where. I was not like the others. We heard all this before. No, I'm going to explain this now. It won't take a long time. It's, it's, it's different. It's Janet's right. got a call. I know she has, but I don't care. What happened was, you see, I was uh, in a sickly. family. Are you starting there, are you? I'm not starting there. All right. There's no need to call me sickly. All right. There's no need for that. Uh, in, in in my house, there was uh, my house is full of musicians. Now, all my friends outside the house were listening to The Shadows and various guitar kind of ventures and stuff like that. But I wasn't. Because people were teaching me, I was listening to jazz, and, and there was a fella in my house. And I, I don't want to name his name because he's Why still not going to. Because, you know, he, people don't like being named on the radio. Yes, they do. Johnny McCollum was his name. Right. And he was from Belfast, and he married my cousin. All right. And he was a fine, fine guitar player. And he, him and I had a kind of rapport, and I had a little guitar, and he taught me all these things, all these jazz things, you see? Uh, chords and uh, various songs, and I was, not, I was never listening. Everybody else was playing a patch. If we already phoned him, would he. Uh, confirm that. He'd be able to confirm that, that yes. he would, he would. What do you always look for proof when I tell I you know. anything? Right, As okay. if I'm some kind of defendant. Right. Anyway, so... What, but Judge it, Judy does that. I know, but she's a judge. Mm. You're not. Uh, but the point, the upshot of it was that when I kind of spent a couple of years in my bedroom learning all this stuff, and then I became interested in classical guitar. So what I used to do is I used to, I used to uh, learn Bach. I learned how to read music, and I used to play uh, uh, Bach two-part inventions and stuff like that, work them all out. So between jazz and Bach, I was doing all this, and I thought everybody else was doing that. And then when I finally went up to the world, out to the world, and uh, was asked to join a band, and everybody was all standing around playing Apache. And I said, what is this? What is this crap? So oh, I, I, well, I'm telling you, uh, I yeah, never fit it in. Yeah. So I could never well, we do it. We know that. We know that. I could. I never fit it in. So yeah. eventually, what happened was, I said I couldn't be bothered with that. So uh, what happened one time? I was sacked out of this band, and then I, I lost everything that I had, and I was destitute and all kinds of stuff. And somebody said to me, "Look, here's a job as, as a bass guitar player. I know this band. They're looking for a bass guitar player, and he's got his own bass, and he's got their own amplifier and everything. And I was starving. I hadn't a penny. Where so, was this? Cookstown." A band called the Grafton how did you Silver. Get, how did you get from Derry to Cookstown? Because I was in England and I was destitute over there. And I came back. I had no. I had to sell my guitar. There's a lot of gaps here. I know, but I don't want. It's, I haven't got all day here. I haven't got I, a lot I, of gaps. I had to sell my guitar and I had to sell my amplifier, but I, I was never happy being a guitar what player. What happened to the 14 year old? What he, happened? What happened? To the the, the uh, he became the, 17. No, but if he was 14 or 15. No, he, and, he, and he's a van in the bedroom pulls, for three years. A van pulls up outside the door, and the boy says, "Hey, come on, we heard you can play the guitar." Yeah, that's come the start on. of it. That's when I came out of the house after and playing all my classical stuff, my jazz stuff, and then I went on the stage and there was fellas in shiny suits singing uh, "Come Down from the Mountain, Katie Daly" and playing a patch. And, and I said, Joseph what? Lord, is Joseph Locke fit in? He didn't fit in. He did. He didn't fit in. But who fit? Who who was it? Frank Frank Connors, what do you call him? Frank no. Carson. Frank Carson. That's before that. I can't tell you everything. I'm just giving you a career path here. And I want to talk to you later about your studies. 
How, how are your social anthropological studies getting on? Um, well, we, we have to move to stage two yet. I'll talk about that after. Uh -huh. Anyway, all I'm saying is I was in my bedroom for two or three years and I thought everybody was like me. But then when I came out of my bedroom, a man knocked on the door and said, Jonah playing the band. They were all playing shake, rattle and roll and stuff like that. And I'm going, what, the, what this is crap? And I was very unhappy, and I played a wee bit, but I was no good at it because I wasn't interested in it. And then I went off to England, and then I was marooned and destitute and stuff. And I'm I came going back. to ring your brother, Charlie. And I came back. He'll tell you the truth. I and know. I came back, and then this fellow said, there's a fellow down and uh, he's got a, a band. And I had no money at all. Like I wouldn't even get the brew. Do you imagine how bad that was? I, w I couldn't even sign on because I'd been uh, I'd been, been disappeared for well, years. Okay, wait a minute. Are you, are you, where, where are you now? Are you I'm in, here in Derry. And you're starving. I'm starving. I'm not, I'm not, I've no money. I'm not starving. I've no money. I've, I'm sitting in the house looking at the window. My mother's feeding me, and she's good to me. But I have right. no. I've no career. I so know how, nothing. How did you get to Cookstown? A man gave me a lift. <laughs> 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 you know, the fellow was a trumpet player. His name is Bobby Brown. He's Dana's brother. And he he was in your house. I used to call him Dan. Right. He said about this, he was in this band in Cookstown called the Grafton Show Band. Right. He said, they're looking for a bass player. And I said, but I'm not a bass player. He said, yeah, of course you can't. Any, 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 the also person needs to sing as well. So I, and I was looking for a singing bass player. I said, I'm neither of them. He said, he's got a bass guitar and he's got an amplifier. Who? The fellow who was the leader of the band, because the, the fellow who was in the band before had no money and he had bought him a bass and an amplifier. Oh, and, and the fellow had left, so it belonged yeah, to him. Yeah, 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 so yeah, I said to yeah. myself, I can do that because the bottom four strings in the bass guitar is the same as the bottom four strings in the ordinary guitar. Right. So I went up to Philip's Record Shop, which is no longer there in Shipkey Street, uh -huh. and I bought a, 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 a music of a, a song by the Beats called You Can't Do That, which is recorded by Henry McCullough, and I play it for sentimental reasons. So I worked out the bass thing, right? And then I, I worked out the song and I started to sing it and I, I practiced singing the song and playing the bass at the same time. And then I went up to this rehearsal and the fellow said, uh, well, there you are. He said, uh, well, you sing? I said, yeah, of course I do. He said, what would you like to sing? I said, well, oh, let me see what, I want to pick something easy. Because, you know, uh, I said, do you know that uh, song? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, by the Beatles it's called You Can't Do That. Do you know that? I can do that. So I sang that and played the bass and the voice is very good. You're in the band. And I went, hey, hey, presto, money at last. And then I got interested in the bass, and then I became a bass player, and I put all thoughts of playing the guitar behind me because I didn't want to play Apache. I didn't want to play that. I didn't want to play Please, Please Me. I didn't want that. So the bass player, when you play the bass, everybody leaves you alone, and nobody annoys you. And you're able to stand there and look at all the girls, and nobody says that's the wrong note. And then I got interested in it, and then I became the best bass player in the whole world. How did this start? I don't know. Is, Is there someone on the line here? Aye. Hello, I... good morning. Hello, Jerry. I'm sorry you had to listen to all that. I had to get it out of me. All right, I would have been listening to it on the radio anyway, so not a problem. Okay. Thank you very much for having me on. Not at all, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's Iris, by the way. Iris, good I morning. I was listening to you the other day talking to the chap about the Titanic Centre and he went to see a, was it a play or a show? Yes, uh, called the, uh, the Boat Factory with uh, Dan Gordon. Yes, well, as I was listening to you, I sort of had a thought. I have a book here in my hand at the minute, and it's called The Port of Belfast, 1785 to 1985. Yes. Uh, it starts with showing you what the uh, harbour would look like in 1785, and then at, on the last page, it ends with how it looked like in 1985. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's, there's also, okay, it's, it's just a mind of information from start to finish. And there's one uh, page lists uh, the customs book of Belfast for 1685. Yeah. And it tells you where the ships came into the port from probably, and what they yeah. were carrying timber, wine, salt, sugar, and tobacco. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ships in ballast, uh, they started to load cattle products, beef butter and hides. I just could go on and on Jerry. it's a mind of information but I'll tell you what it is. I don't need it and I would love somebody that was really really interested in the port of Belfast to have it but, and I wouldn't want any money for it. A wee donation to uh, Click Sergeant Cancer yes, Fund yes, yes. in Northern Ireland would be great. Okay so anyone, uh, where did you find this book? In a... I've had it for years Jerry. Oh. it's a mind of information and any, I don't need it now and I've read it and uh, someone else who's interested and if the charity could benefit a wee bit, uh, that would be just great. Okay, could you give us the title again and the author? It's, it's called The Port of Belfast mm -hmm. and it's 1785 mm -hmm. to 1985. It's a lovely hardback, royal blue book 
and the writing on it, the print on it, is in gold. Who's the author? Not the book. Uh, probably, like everything else, uh, you know, if somebody was really interested in it, they wouldn't mind giving a wee donation to the charity. I don't want any money for it. Okay, do you have it in front of you? I have it here, well, yes. Who, who wrote it? Can you tell me uh, who wrote it? No, just, just a wee second. It's a historical review... Uh, Robin Sweetenham and Cecil Nimmons, okay. published by the Belfast Harbour Commissioners, mm-hmm. nineteen eighty-five. There we go. Yeah, all right. It's, well, it's, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that that sounds like an academic study, and it's obviously the type of book that the people would be interested in who are serious. Yes. So uh, I would say you'd probably have no bother getting somebody to take that off your hands. Yes, and uh, as I say, yeah, just just a wee donation to charity, and just while I was on. Um, Dr. Ballard is speaking to uh, Alan Simpson this afternoon, and I can't wait to hear him. Dr. He Ballard, be- the man who discovered the uh, Titanic. Yes. Yeah. I have great inf- uh, admiration for him because, as you know, uh, m- probably more so than me, he discovered the ship where it was lying all those miles down. Why I admire him was, in his books I've read about him, he would have seen champagne bottles and things, but he never, ever disturbed anything because he thought that it was, and as indeed it was, their grave, and he just wouldn't. And I have every admiration for that man. I, all his books are so, so interesting, and I'm looking really forward to hearing him speaking to Alan this afternoon. He also, if I may say so, he also features in a documentary that I was involved in that's on Radio 4 on Friday week. Oh, good. That's on 11 o'clock. It's about, not about the Titanic sinking, it's about the attitude to no- Northern Ireland and Belfast people in particular to the Titanic over those last 100 years. Yes. And that'd well, be worthwhile listening to if you, if you feel like it. I won't be on the air that day. Yes. So, so there'll be uh-huh. no clash. Oh, that, that's, that's good. You won't be on? <laughs> not that day. I'm going off for a few days. Right. Uh, next Thursday is, right. is my last day for a couple of weeks. Um, I'm sorry, Jerry, but when did you say that's on? Next Friday. Not, not tomorrow. Next Friday at 11 o'clock in the morning, Radio 4. Radio 4. It's called that's Titanic Town. I'm glad you told me that because, like yourself, I like reading things that are true that have happened. Absolutely. And I like the history of maybe families and that, but I don't like any of the made-up mm. things. All the, all the fiction stuff, yeah. It, to be honest. No, yeah. Don't be, uh, but, don't be watching Titanic on the TV then. Uh, sorry? Don't be watching Titanic on the TV then. I no. don't watch... No. no, I personally don't. There was another thing you had advised people to watch and I have been watching it. I think it might have be, been on Channel 4. Ch- Homeland? Yes. Homeland is brilliant. Yes, it's absolutely brilliant. No, I wouldn't. That's great. Well, listen, thank you very much for that. And anyone who's interested in your book, we'll put them yes, on to you. and they have my number there. OK. And, and that would be just great. Someone else might as well use it. OK. OK, and thank you so much for giving me that time. Not at all. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Jerry. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 Everybody's talking about Titanic. And, mm-hmm. you know, why not? It may, be, it may be a wee bit over the top, but she can only do it. It's only 100 years old, the sinking once in a lifetime. And we'll be talking to Amanda Burton tomorrow. Do you know that? No. Talking to Amanda Burton. You know who Amanda Burton is, yes, don't you? Of she's very nice. She's from here, I from Derry Stoke, London, yeah, there. Yeah, out the road. And she's uh, out the road. Mm-hmm. As we say. <laughs> out the road. As we say. Mm-hmm. She's from out the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's going to call us from France because she's involved in uh, these uh, series called Titanic Letters. Lots of famous people are reading letters. I'm. Well, I, I was well, asked. I, mean, lots of, I, I was, wasn't. Were you I, asked? Was, I was asked to do it. I said no. Why? I'm not telling you why. Why did you say no? I know. I'm sorry. I should. I, 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 they asked me at the wrong time. I said I didn't want to do it. Never asked me. I know they didn't want you, but I, I'm sorry now. I didn't do it because it's very, very good, and I wish I had done it. And when I hear all the people reading the letters, I'll be jealous because uh-huh. I, I, no, I wanted to do it. Well, I, why didn't you do it? It's a long story. It's about things that you don't care about. So, anyway. What do you fit there with your neck for? Because I want to try and make it young. (laughs) (laughs) On 92 to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave, this is BBC Radio Ulster. And at 11 o'clock, this is the BBC News with Keith Burnside. The government says there'll be 15 times more winners than losers when changes to the tax credit system come into effect tomorrow. The comments follow Labour claims that up to a million families will lose their tax credits. The Shadow Chancellor, Ed Balls, said some of the poorest families would be particularly hard hit because they're being asked to work longer to qualify. If you are, though, a low-income family on the minimum wage, 
where you're being told if you don't work eight more hours, you'll lose all your tax credits, thousands of pounds. They stand to lose £73 a week. A rocket fired from Egypt has hit the southern Israeli resort of Elat. No one was injured. Our Middle East correspondent Kevin Conley reports from Jerusalem. The attack on Elat came shortly after midnight. Wreckage from at least one rocket was found on a building site not far from a residential area, although no one was injured and there are no reports of any damage. It was time to coincide with the beginning of the Passover holiday when Israeli tourists have already begun gathering in Elat. The resort lies close to Israel's border with Egypt, and the rocket, or rockets, appear to have been fired from the Egyptian Sinai Peninsula. Three police officers in London have been referred to the Independent Police Complaints Commission following allegations that they made racist comments while they were talking to colleagues. The officers are all based in Newham. About 20 million people in England face fines of up to £1,000 if they use a hosepipe from today. A ban has been introduced by seven water companies in the east and southeast of the country. One of them, Anglian Water, said weeks and weeks of rain would be needed before the ban could be lifted. A number of homes have been evacuated in North Belfast because of a security alert. Army bomb experts are examining a suspicious object at Brompton Park in Ardoyne. Sport now, here's Grant Cameron. England's cricketers are 383 for five on day three of cricket's second test against Sri Lanka in Colombo. A lead of 108 runs. Matt Pryor has just gone for 11. Great Britain's women have claimed gold in the three-kilometre team pursuit at the Track Cycling World Championships in Melbourne. They clocked a record world time after dropping Northern Ireland's Wendy Hoovenhagel. Chasing Olympic qualification, cyclist Martin Irvine lies eighth after the first of six races in the two-day Omnium competition at those Track World Championships and in golf the first major of the year, the Masters gets underway at lunchtime in Augusta with heavy rain and strong winds forecast. Now, talking of the weather Benaz Achenar has the weather Good morning, a fairly quiet day ahead. Some glimpse of sunshine this morning, especially for eastern counties. Through the day getting cloudier from the west by the afternoon, the odd spot of rain spilling into northern and western counties. Elsewhere dry but rather cloudy, light winds, highs of 8 to 10 Celsius. The rain will fizzle out tonight and then it should be a mainly dry night with the temperatures ranging between 5 to 8 Celsius. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. As you've heard in our news, there is a security alert in North Belfast. Brompton Park has been closed between Etna Drive and Berwick Road. Elsewhere in the city, the traffic lights have been fixed at the junction of Kingsbridge, Annadale Embankment and Sunnyside Street. And in Maharafelt, Mullaboy Hill is closed at the Desert Martin Road until Sunday evening as work is being carried out by Northern Ireland Water. Eileen Moyner reporting. Travel News on BBC Radio Ulster. On Talkback with Jim Fitzpatrick today. Football, will it always be a man's game? Laurie Sanchez says in 10 years' time we could see a woman managing a top team. Is he right or is sexism still alive and well in the game? Tax credits come to an end for some families here. Will it cause real hardship? Should you have been getting them in the first place? And the lotto winner who scooped almost €6 million euro back serving sausage suppers in her mum and dad's chippy. And we finally got him, the teenage xylophone player from Britain's Got Talent. Has Ashley Elliott made percussion cool? All that on Talk Back at 12. Wouldn't have happened in my day. <laughs> oh, do you remember? Hey, that? David. Uh, Just hear another. the xylophone? What? The xylophone. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? Who's hey, the listen. only person we know plays the xylophone? Uh, the only person we know who plays yeah. the xylophone? Well, we don't know him personally, but you might know him personally. I don't think I know... You, I don't recall <laughs> anyone playing the xylophone. You must know someone who plays the xylophone. Come I on. actually don't. A no. very famous person. Oh, uh, well... Uh, Lionel Hampton Come on. was the famous xylophone player on, and jazz no, player no, in America. No, no, like no, a, no. Outside of that. Outside? You know, outside I, I don't you know. know. Will you stop? You do. Look, will you stop this? Come tell, on, just you, tell me who it is. Come on now. This person would do it as a as a party piece. Oh, just tell me who no, it is. No, come on, guess. Walter Love. No. Julian Simmons. No, come on. No, bigger I than don't that. Know. Come on. Jackie Fuller. National TV. I don't know. You do. Ken Dodd. National TV. Ken Dodd. No, an elderly man. An elderly man. Yeah. Older, I don't know. Older than Ken Dodd. Who's, nobody's older yeah, than exactly. Ken Dodd. Exactly, that's why I say that. Come on. I, t- tell me. No, go on, I'm going to turn off your microphone if you don't tell me. Uh, he's got a TV show. All right. Who is he? The longest running TV show in the world. On Titchmarsh? No, come on. Who? She doesn't know. 
Like, no. Gay Byrne? No. Who? Will you tell me? Who is it? The star man. Stars at night. Who? Thing. I can't remember his name. You don't know his name, Patrick, Dres, you tell me? Patrick, Patrick Murr. Patrick Murr. Patrick Murr. Oh, God, so that, did that have to take so long? He didn't know that. I didn't know that. Uh, he so how can he reach them? He, he doodle doodle How can he reach them? He, he's got a doodle, belly doodle in front of him. He, he's... Anyway, listen, I want you to... Uh, you know, we, we've talked about your social anthropology course. Now, what do you call a person who plays a xylophone? I'm a, xylo- a xylophonist. A z- <laughs> That's a great word. <laughs> it is a silophonist. No, it's a, That's a, they call it the vibra, a, vibraphon, a vibraphonist. They call them vibraphones as well. They call them a, a vibes player, basically. That's what they call them in jazz. The person who plays a xylophone is a vibes player, a vibraphone, or they call them a xylophonist, or whatever you call it. <laughs> and speaking of which, part of your social yes. anthropology course is be. Uh, no, I don't know. Have you been on top of this? I don't think you have. Uh, I think you should be studying how num- the number of people who can't say Wendy Hoovenhagel. Wendy Hoovenhagel? Wendy Hoovenhagel. Can't. You can't say it. Oh, well, give me your name again. Then, well, Wendy Hoovenhagel. That's the right way. That's the cyclist. Wendy Hoovenhagel. Wendy Hoovenhagel. I want you to keep track of the number of people who can't say that. Because there's a lot of men struggling with that. Should I? Should I? There's a lot of men struggling with that. Should I be studying single... A single person, yes. You know, one of the things, than groups of people. Okay, okay. I, I, I want to talk this to you. There's a thing called uh, it's participant observation, right? That's, that's a general term. But what you have to do, it's an intense case study. That's what they call it, an ICS. You see, there's a man that I'm looking at. I don't want to mention his name, but I am looking at a man. Mm-hmm. I want you to follow a person and uh-huh. study every move they make, and and construct a dossier of his foibles right. and indeed his faults. And indeed, the things that he does best, and the way he thinks about the world. Uh-huh. This is what, and then you have then. to present this. You have to present it to me. I have to mark it out of a hundred. I want you to select a person who's complicated, who is uh, much respect, much loved, and much well. Not an ordinary person. I want you to follow this person and let him know that you're doing this. But do not be intrusive. Do not interfere with what he does. Just be there, like a fly on the wall, and study him. And I want you to follow Hugo. Okay. The report back to me. <laughs> I talked about the Walls being the best band in Northern Ireland, but this is the most interesting band. They're called the Salt Flats. This is a cover. They're very good. I know, but listen to the band.
take me back I think I'm going crazy You stop me like a heart attack You give me hope, you give me maybe But I'm not the one who's dragging you down And destroying your name on a good side of town For it's no business of mine what you do with your time When every second's like the last I'll watch the sun awake the city You know that I can't help myself These morning streets, they show no pity I go hunting your face In every crowd And as evening draws near My chances go slim But it's no business of mine What you do with your time You've been walking in shoes And someone bought you for dancing The light on your face Good. Uh, that's Declan McLaughlin, a singer-songwriter from here in Derry, Stoke, London. Derry, very talented. That's a track called Take Me Back. And before that was The Salt Flats. Sorry, The Salt Flats. And uh, that's a, a cover of a Fleetwood Mac song called Never Going Back Again. And uh, that's just fantastic. Um, here, uh, Here's something I didn't think of. Uh, a listener said, uh, uh, tell Sean it'll soon be time to buy himself a pair of plastic gloves because the Balmoral show <laughs> is, is coming up again <laughs> soon. Do you, do you plan yeah. to... <laughs> That's your hit. Well, you really are hit for me. You won't let it go, will you? Nah. Neither would I. <laughs> anyway, there's the, uh, I've got a text here from a, a bull. Uh-huh. It says... Uh. <laughs> Stop it. Myself and my wife are in labour at the Ulster Hospital. I would say one more than the other. Uh, she's been in labour from this wee small hours. The bundle clearly doesn't want to come out. Anyway... I confiscated the radio and changed it from City Beat at 10.30 because if anyone's voice is going to get this baby out, it'll be you. Probably come and tell us to turn that racket down. Will you please tell Sonia I love her? And she's doing great. That's Stevie and Banger. Stevie, who's a critic of this program. Mm -hmm. Thanks, bud. You have a great show. And Sean is terrible. (laughs) I added that bit at the end. (laughs) Interview with Muhammad Ali was recorded in 2003. You were right then. Uh, You see, because he's not capable. God love him. He's not capable of... No, he's not. 
and hasn't been for this last oh, couple dear. of years. Uh, these are text messages. Uh, Je- uh, here's a message. Do you know anything hey, about this? Maybe the undertone can help me on this. Can you give the names of your other members of the Grafton Show Band? <laughs> That's a summon ring ringing in. Uh, well, what? Okay, Norman right. Ferguson was a guitar player. He was my friend. I see him right. every now and again. Right. Um, Desi Hughes was the drummer. Uh, mm-hmm. Nisi Hughes was the saxophone player of two brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else was there? Jimmy Devlin, of course, the late Jimmy Devlin was a band leader. He played saxophone as well. Nice man. He di- only died a couple of years ago. Uh, somebody else was in it. I can't remember you? who else. Me. Yeah. Um, was there a people. lead singer? There was a lead singer. Oh, a number of lead singers. Yeah. There was a girl from Belfast called Donna Gale, not her real name. Uh, uh, yeah. Can't remember anybody else. A long time ago, you know. Let's see. Who else? Have you got, have you got names there, no. don't you? No. I thought you were checking them off. Oh, no, no, no. Anyway, here's a message. Uh, Jerry, what's with the new woman talking at the start of yesterday's podcast? I hope this isn't going to be a common feature now. But there was no podcast yesterday due to the lack of illness. There was no podcast. We didn't have a podcast yesterday. Was there a woman on instead? Sure, I don't know. Also, it says bandwidth. I must listen to that after to see what's going on. Bandwidth. That person didn't have enough internet to play your program back on the iPlayer. It happens to the best of us when we run out of bandwidth. Jerry, the gentleman's broadband connection was too low to stream the program. That's it. We're in general agreement on that. Uh, tell Jerry his show went off the air at 11 a.m. yesterday. I was aware of that. And we missed most of the 11 o'clock news from a, b- a brave listener. Read this out to the nation. Please, it's very important for them to know. Yes, there was some kind of technical hitch yesterday. I suppose I should have mentioned it. But you see, I didn't know what to say because sometimes at 11 o'clock, if the 11 o'clock news doesn't come on it's probably it may not be the fault of radio also the mu- the the news comes from Belfast it may be some fault here so I don't say to people in case maybe perhaps it's only listeners in the northwest who didn't hear it so I can't say so we don't matter we do matter it's just when I don't hear you the could news. have said some listeners may have experienced a little difficulty why didn't you do it I didn't know you were off the air no you see you didn't even know we were off the air were you talking about a, a, a phone called Ali no that was a film uh, featuring, um, what's yeah. his name, uh, the fellow who, who played uh, uh, <laughs> what? Muhammad Ali. Well, what this, is, this is A-L-L-E-Y. No, the film was A-L-A, A-L-A. Yeah. The film was called Ali. Episode about uh, Janet years handed, ago. handed me a note saying the film Ali was 2002, whatever that means. Yeah. Maybe that's the that document. Ali, oh. A-L-A, was out in 2002. No, but it's yeah. A-L-L-E-Y. That's spelled wrong. That's because Janet doesn't know how to spell Ali. It was, wasn't a, uh, are you talking about the same thing? There was a film called Ali out in 2002. But no, I wasn't talking about it. Featuring, what do you call your man, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air? Will Smith. Will Smith. He played the part. That's, I know you weren't talking about that. I know you weren't talking about that. I know you weren't. Well, All what? I'm, Why have I got that note? Because somebody handed it to you. Why didn't Janet you it handed it to me. Yeah, and she spelled Ali wrong. Put it in the bin. Put it in the bin. Tear it up. Mm-hmm. It's nothing to do with what we're talking about. What? Janet said she just got a phone call. <laughs> did you talk to Peter yet? No. Is there a Peter there? Aye. How long has he been there? Since How long is Peter there? Uh, yeah, hold on. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. <laughs> I listen to you every day. You were on, you were on Radio 1 yesterday. Was I? Or the day before. Really? Yes. On all the time. That fellow Greg James. Greg to, James show. He, he, he two listens o'clock. to this programme and he plays bits of it every well every week or so. But I wonder is he, I hope he's not. No, he's okay. Uh, he, he's, uh, I've met him. He's okay. Is he all right, is he? Oh, he enjoys the programme. Oh, that's okay. He's oh, not, no, he's not making fun of us. Not making fun of us, no, will he? No. I wouldn't like to think that. Oh, but that's because you're insecure. I know. Tell him that when you're talking to him, will he? Oh, Sean's insecure. Yeah. Don't make a fun. No, he enjoys the crack. He can't Does he? He doesn't understand why we're on. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to yous, it says here, every day. I should read that note I got of the record today, shouldn't I? No, 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 no. Sometimes, sometimes people, when they're sending in CDs. No, I'm not going to say anything. Don't All worry. Right. Trust me. I, I do trust you. Sometimes people, when they're sending CDs, they write you a little letter explaining what the CD is about and that kind of carry on, who they are. Now, sometimes when you read the note, you don't even have to play the CD. <laughs> Do you? Oh, that's cruel. But I'm not mentioning any names. I know, but... All I'm saying is sometimes you read the note and you just throw the CD in the bin because, you, you know, it, no way. Anyway, I listen to you every day because I'm on the DLA. <laughs> Could you please play your favourite Chris Christopherson song? What's your favourite Chris Christopherson song? 
Um, well, offhand, I will go for Darby's Castle. Oh, good, good choice. I went fishing. What's yours? For, what the Pilgrim? I went fishing yeah. for the first time ever last week at Shaw's. You were that surprised, you didn't it? Darby's Castle surprised you? It, no, it didn't because it's a very good song. Uh, that was I, that was the early Chris Christopherson. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know you. I know you and him are big buddies. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm only trying to. I'm, I'm just trying to sort of. I want to sort of hang out with you guys. You know. He well, admired, sort of, He used to admire me. Yeah. I went fishing for the first. I went fishing for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I went fishing for the what first. What about Peter? Will you let me finish this? I went fishing for the first time ever <laughs> last week at Shaw's Bridge. I didn't see any fish, but a foot long turtle came up for breath for a few seconds before disappearing again. Is this an unusual sighting like that of Nessie or the big cat jobs? Are there foot long turtles in Shaw's Bridge? I saw one. Is this regular? I became Seamus McKee there, didn't I, for a moment? I saw one. Ask how do you get rid of ants in a working kitchen? I'm just reading these out. That's for Journey. Get them hungry and have have them share a meal works a treat. What does that mean? That's the dogs mating. Ah or the pandas, whatever. The walls the walls are from Galway. And also a band called The Stunning, when they aren't busy calling themselves The Walls. What's the name of the album featuring the Pygmies? It's called Deep Forest. And the group who call themselves, well, they're, they're Pygmies and all kinds of people. They're, it's, they're called Deep Forest. The, the artists at Deep Forest and the this name of the CD is Deep Forest. And you can get it on Amazon. I, I recommend it very highly. Leo Weir. Yes. <laughs> yes. Is, any more, is there any more to follow that? Leo Weir. Leo Weir. Yeah. Leo Weir. That means nothing to me. Leo Weir. It's a man's name, obviously. I wonder who, what you, why are you saying this? Paddy France. Paddy France. No. No. I'm, no? No. Makes no difference. John. Ah, Man in the Grafton. Ah. Oh, no, there were a number of versions of yes. the band. Ah. Leo Weir. Yes, well, I well, But him. it says here he was the, 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 the bass guitarist. Well, I've the, obviously replaced him. Re- uh, and... Paddy France, P A D D A. So, so obviously female. No. Do you remember her? No, no. Don't. Uh, John Hughes on trombone. Yes. No, he he went to join a band called the Hilton. I wasn't there when he was there. Raymond Conway. Not Raymond sure Conway. He no, he wasn't there when he was a drummer. He had left by the time I joined. And uh, he's poor Raymond is no longer with us. Don McLean's playing in the Millennium Forum this summer. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> I, I, he retired, didn't he? That's why he's here. Uh, someone on the line here. Hello. Hello there. Sorry to keep you. I know it's, you've been a long time there. I know. Uh, no problem. No problem. Uh, no, I I was saying to Janet that I heard your I listened to your show yesterday. You were talking about uh, or Sean brought up the topic of men or boys being able to blow under their hands to make noises. Uh, and uh, we, I mean, I'm over 50 years of age, and we used to do it as uh, young boys pretend to be cowboys and Indians. Now, mm-hmm. we have, uh, we ended up uh, honing the skill where you could make a sound that would make the wood pigeons talk back to you. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was two different, um, there was two different uh, responses that you could get. One was, say, February, March time, where if you did it, uh, a certain pattern. It was sort of like a territorial thing where the pigeons would sort of, wood pigeons would sort of, sort of hover around you and sort of bomb you, but like sort of try and scare you off. And then sort of April, May time, uh, if you changed it slightly, it would actually become a mating call for a wood pigeon. And you could, you get a bit of consternation among the wood pigeons of sort of shouting back and forward to each other, like, whereas as we fellas, we'd have been lying on the grass, sort of mm. driving them demented. Well, well, what did you used to do to make them demented? Can you do that? Can you still do it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Would you do it for us? Right, okay then. Sean, listen to this. I'm this listening to this. Is this, is this is what I was doing yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. Uh, I know. Did you hear that? Yeah. I, oh, yeah, that's very good. Now, well, if you did that three times and put an extra note at the end, that was the mating call. Go ahead. And if oh, I'm afraid the pigeons might have come through the window at me. <laughs> that's okay. Maybe Janet will jump on Sean. <laughs> well, do it, do you so, But if you did that just five times in a row, <laughs> then that was the that was the uh, the territorial uh, sort of claim. I suppose, as I said to Janet, it's a bit like maybe a dog lifting its leg at a lamppost. Mm. Well, uh, how did so, you, you guys work this out yourself? Oh, well, as I say, we as we boys, like we used to, like obviously, like watch a lot of westerns and things, and that was like I was always one of the Indians. So we had our, our, that we were doing the Indian calls, you see, and then we found by accident that these birds started <laughs> replying. 
Do you know what I would like to do? Do you know the guys that stand on the corner now? These are the young guys that stand with the hoodies yeah. and drinking the vodka and sniffing the glue. Yeah. I'd love to go up and say to them, listen, can any of you guys do a pigeon's mating call? <laughs> I would say the answer may be no. I would say you, could, you well, might be right. Peter, Peter, could, could you uh, could you blow a tune then through? Oh, I, 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 see, Jerry doesn't, Jerry's not familiar I with this. Care. I don't Could you, you, could you do something, here. Peter? Yeah. Yeah, I'll try here. Go on, Hold just, on. Just, just a wee blast. Mm. What do you hear this? Mm. This is what I'm talking about, Jerry. Sorry, it's almost, day. Yeah, was, almost no, happy birthday. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's very good. See, that's the thing what, that you couldn't do What's yet. the clue, Peter? Don't what, get what, so excited. No, what's the technique, Peter? Right, You've got your two thumbs. Right? You're blowing under your two thumbs. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, Janet was on about the, uh, using a blade of grass. Now, I right. was never able to use the grass. No, not a kid, I. No, but uh, I used to smoke it. <laughs> the thing is, and I'm sure I don't want to take us down a, a wrong avenue here, but it's the way you purse your lips. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. The Janet's good at that. <laughs> Pucker up. So, uh, and then the pin on the the depth of the note is how big the hollow in your hand is. You know, you can oh, I, I. if you if you like, you're just sort of getting a, it's a bit like a, I suppose like a wind instrument. Your how how much the air resonates inside you your stop hand. Stop doing that. <laughs> You're getting spittle on the microphone. People have to do this after you. you sounds like a man taking an asthma attack. So, sounds like an obscene phone call. <laughs> Stop doing that. I'm trying to blow. You can't do it. So, this man, go and ask that man to do that again. Do eh? the pigeon. Do the wood pigeon. Do the pigeon. pigeon, pigeon, pigeon oh, you see. What, they do, right? what you wouldn't give to be able to uh, do yes, that. Yes, exactly. You would give you would give a king's ransom to be able to do that. Well, I, right, Peter. Yeah. Right, I'll give you one now. Then. Well, Can yeah. you... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very kindly. <laughs> Janet, turn away. <laughs> right, go ahead. Do you have to poke her off for this? No, you don't. No, it's better. It's better if you don't. All right. Right, go ahead. No, can you? Can you? <laughs> can you? <laughs> Will you do it? No, I just want to ask Peter. Can he p- pull his? <laughs> can he pull his what? <laughs> Janet, talk to him. I have to turn this microphone off. What? Can he pull his what? <laughs> can he what? Will you straighten up? This is you're broadcasting here. <laughs> Come on, what? Can he pull his b- bottom? <laughs> Can you pull your bottom lip over your oh, head? No, a muscle, Is that what you're trying no, to say? No, a muscle. You know, that one, without putting your fingers in your mouth. Oh, aye, aye. <laughs> Can you? Oh, yeah. Well, go on. <laughs> That's good. That's me back to you. Anderson can't do that. Oh, Kelly, not right. No. It's all the way you use your lips, you see. Absolutely. I can't do any of that stuff. All oh, right. And I'm pleased to say that Janet can't either. <laughs> <laughs> right, go away. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Down, down, we went down. You watch yourself, you know. Down, down, we went down. Down from higher ground. Oh, missing my sister down. This could have went too far, you know. But I know you did what you had to do When you picked up that axe handle You were in charge of what was gonna happen to you
great. Uh, nothing like a bit of Dobro. That's Sing My Sister Down from uh, the Henry Girls. That's from their last album, which is called December Moon. Henry Girls, of course, are from Donegal. Uh, Malin Head, to be exact. And coming up to Easter uh, weekend, I know a lot of people in Belfast go up to Donegal, go up to Inishowen, actually, as a matter of fact. A lot of people like going up there. There's uh, The Henry Girls are doing a very interesting gig. It's a charity gig, all kinds of guests in uh, McGrory's in Coldaff on Sunday night, Easter Sunday night, uh, if you fancy. If you're in the vicinity, come down to that. I'll be there. And uh, I would like that, I'll tell you. You never go anywhere. Me? No. No. Great show yesterday, kid. A focus group. See, it goes to show you, when I say I'm asking you to study people, people are studying this program, people of an anthropological bent. Uh, a, a focus group in the hills above Drum Quinn found the show to be high in coilless interruptus and low on diddly D. Group spokesman said, I found the show to be wholesome, well-produced and easy to open due to a lack of cellophane. Tommy, my cat, sauntered in, whistling merrily, and said, nothing new in the political front until Mike Nesbitt announces that the UUP and George Galloway's respect party are going into coalition. A wise move on Mike's part, I said. It's the only way the UUP will ever get a voice in Westminster. And what a voice, said Tommy. George Galloway is allowed, acrimonious and indefatigable in his quest for justice and free ice cream for the over-90s. I reached for two bottles of black and white whiskey, handed a bottle to Tommy and cried, Let's drink a dram to bunny me, George! I must have blacked out first. I have no recollection of Tommy falling. I heard him before I saw him. What goes there? Who goes there? I said. Tobias Nolanus, came the answer from a stranger. Advance me recognised, I roared. Out from a strange billowing mist stepped Stephen Nolan, wearing a short toga with a Ben Sherman shirt. Tubby grasped one nipple and cried, I must see Caesar tonight. Inform Caesar that Tubbyus Nolanus is without. Without what? I asked. Never you mind, roared Tubbyus. Just tell Julius I must see him. Julius Simmons this. <laughs> uh, no, it's not Angelina, it's Angelo. Not so. F- what are you talking about? Angelina mm. who? No. What's that? It's what a, are you saying? It's, it's, a re- a, it's, it's, it's a request that I have for what you. What is? For, uh, a, a, a couple of men who listen to you every morning in yes. Ghana. In yes. Ghana. In Ghana, yeah. You don't sound so surprised. Why? Why not? Well, I am surprised. You're not surprised. Ghana, what's wrong? People listen all over the world. You know that. Yeah, but a man from Belfast. P- P- people in Belfast go to Ghana, yeah. Yeah, and a man from Larne. Yeah, in Ghana as well. Yes. Yeah? It's and not impossible. Listen- all you have to do is get on a plane and you're there. Yeah, but they listen to your programme every morning and they turn the tana up so loud and everyone in the, in the building or building, wherever they're doing, they, everyone so the people it. in the Philippines listen to this programme, people in Papua New Guinea. And I was just saying to Jana... Jana people in is Peru. That, is that Angelo Fionda? Is it, what, is it F-I-O-N-D-A, we think it is. It's one Angelo of those old Fionda. Belfast names. Yes, Bel- Angelo Fionda. Is he, Be- was he from an Italian family in Belfast? If he's from Belfast? Is he, I, I, he's in Ghana. I don't know. Why are you I, so I, surprised I, that a man's in Ghana? All you have to do is get a plane. If you buy and, a ticket, and, you can and go to Ghana. And Barry Quinn from Larne. That sounds more like it. Yeah. Can understand well, the two why guys he's... listen to your programme every morning. Don't be so surprised. I'm not surprised. You are surprised. You interrupted Janet. And sat... Never you mind, roared Tobias. Tell Caesar I must see him. Not so fast. Frequent visit to, to the vomitorium. I yelled, stick your business. Tobias gave a little squeal and cried, There's a moose. Loose about this hoose. Not so fast, I said. Every word you say must go down in the scrolls. Now you said something about a moose. It's loose, cried Toby. About the hoose. Whose hoose, I asked. My hoose, said Toby. Has a moose. Loose. Be gone, plump Bacchus, I yelled. If you think I'll waken noble Caesar with some cock and bull story about a moose loose about your hoose, then you must be as stupid as your fat. Tobias fell to his knees and roared. Tell Caesar, I need him. Guards, I roared. Take this wretch to the cells. There he can sport and play with the computer and the mice. Tobias snapped his fingers and said, I care not a fig. Caesar, roared Tobias. Caesar, big Audrey, Vinny, there's a moose loose. Fat men should not go roaming in the gloaming. What? What? You have to guess the name of the song. The singer's Kevin Doherty. No. No? I can guess the title of a song. Come on, it's a classic. Well, I'm caught one more time. You see, failed again. Up on Cypress Avenue. I call it one more time. Up on Cypress Avenue.
And I'm conquered in a car seat Nothing that I can do I may go crazy Before that mansion on the hill I may go crazy Before that mansion on the hill But my heart keeps beating faster Yeah, my feet can't keep still And I'm the little girl from something One way back home from school And I'm the little girl from something Long way back home from school And I leave for one bow, one and call me all I'm time of food. Let my tongue get tight. Every, every, every time I try to speak. Tongue gets tired Every time I try to speak I'm inside Shakes that's like a leaf on a tree Oh, wait a minute You're the come my lady Red for red And send her That's why horses in a carriage Just return them from the fair Baby, 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 baby. Way up on, 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 way up on
The original version of Madame George from Astral Weeks. That's Van Morrison when he used to be Van Morrison. Uh, the xylophone and vibraphone are not the same instrument as I'm sure you know. The xylophone, as played by Fat Patrick Moore, is purely a percussion instrument which always has wooden bars. The vibraphone usually has metal bars and is made of aluminium or steel. It also has resonators and a sustain pedal like a piano which allows it to be played with much more expression. Did you ever meet Anthony Kerr? He's from Belfast and one of the world's top vibraphone players now based in London. I know the name, but I've never met the man. There we are. You see, we have to keep the people oh, right. Absolutely. If Does I it... hear Titanic mentioned one more time, I'm going to jump, okay. says Michael. That'll do fine, there's, it's, it's Well, it's Thank verging you. on saturation now, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. And there's another week to go, remember. Okay. About one okay. mile south of Five Mile Town on the main Inniskillen Road, there is a lorry which has shed quite a bit of its load onto the road. What do you think is in the lorry? Uh, turnip. Dead, rotting chickens. Oh, dear. Can you imagine that? A mm. lorry load of dead, <laughs> rotting chickens? Where do you get a lorry load of dead, rotten chickens? Where do you get um, that? Well... At a dead, rotten chicken store? Do you remember the man you talked to was looking for the the Newfoundland dog or something? Newfoundland dog, yeah? Yes, right. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, a lady who breeds him contacted him. I think his name is Tommy. Yes, and, and uh, she left a message on his uh, answer phone, but she didn't leave the correct number, apparently. That's but she's right. got the dogs, uh-huh. and mm-hmm. he would like that lady to get in contact with him again. Good. Is the man right? wants to talk about social anthropology. He studied, this gentleman here, studied social anthropology in the late 80s with world-renowned Professor Tim Ash, including the Trobriand Islanders, only to be told on a recent BBC documentary that he was completely wrong and went about things in the most intrusive way. Do you know about conch shell exchange no, in the Trobriand Islands? Is that the next stage? I'm keeping that from you. All oh, right. Because this is the... People used to exchange conches. Do you know what a conch is? No, go on. It's a big shell that you can hear the sea in. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. The Trobriand Islanders, conch shell exchange. They used them for currency. Right. How interesting is that? Yes. Great. Well, that's how it goes. There's a call then, I hear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have you an opinion? Have you wasted our time studying? You see, I never wasted my time studying any of that. I studied social anthropology and indeed graduated because I'm a dip content. Uh, diploma in continuing education and indeed a B I science so. Hans because I discovered that when I went to university, I said to myself, I want to go to your uh, We know all this. No, there's a man... Going, no, there's a, Nick, don't d- dismiss me like that. It's t- important. T- no, it's important because there are people out there studying for their A-levels, well, right? What, and they want to go to university because they think that they're going to meet smart people there. But, she, she but they're not. They're not going to meet smart people there. They're going to meet people who are good at a particular thing. They're not going to meet smart people. And the best reason to go to university is not to get qualifications for a job. Yes. It's to make you a better person. A um, gentleman said to me one time, and I never forgot this. You could join the Merchant Navy. Well, for whatever reason, she must She's very loud in there, isn't she? Totally shut up. Yeah. One of the things the gentleman told me, and I, I never forgot this, and he said, was he was at university, he was a lecturer, and, a and he said, why are you why here? Are you still on air? I said, I, I really don't know. I said, well, I'm here because I used to be a musician, I wanted some time out, I wanted to read a lot of books. And he said, what kind of books are you reading? I said, well, I spend every day in the library and I read a different book every day. 
They said, are these to do your study? I said, no. And he says, well, that's exactly the right thing to do. And he said, do you know why people should go to university? I said, I know why they should go, but I know why they do go. He said, they go for all the wrong reasons. People go for qualifications. People well, go because they think they're going to meet smart people. The only reason to go to university is so as when you leave, you will recognise bullshit when you hear it. And I said to myself, perfect. Perfect. All right, thank you very She's much. She's too close to that microphone. Take that microphone away from her. Gary Anderson show. Take it away from her. I can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Ken positions this microphone every morning, and I'm not allowed to move it. He's a hateful wee yeah. bugger, isn't he? There's a wee call for you. Hello. Good morning. Good morning, Jerry. Oh, yeah. You're sorry to keep you waiting. Sorry. Go ahead. That's okay. Jerry, can we take you back just a couple of of um, hours there, back to the Henry girls? Oh, or yes. The Henry sisters. Sorry, my apologies. No, the Henry girls. They call themselves and they are sisters. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I had the pleasure of playing with the girls this time last year at the, the gig in the band. Would you like to explain that? Uh, yeah, I play with a band, well, we did have a band on the go at the time called Blue Flex. We yes. were an Appalachian bluegrass band. Oh, oh I, heard, I heard about you playing with them. No, seriously. No, I heard. No, I know there's a double entendre in there somewhere, but I heard about, I heard about the way that you, the two of you interacted. Yeah, that's where we're coming back to the programme today. Actually, we discussed with the girls about using their dobro with them um, on their new CD, which is you just played. Yes, yes. But where I'm coming at from, I actually am a dobro player myself. Yes. Or allegedly, so I'm partly to be. Your old colleague Norman Ferguson was playing with us in that little band. Uh, was he? Yes. I like Norman. Great uh, yeah. player too. Yeah, very nice guy, really mm. good. Yeah. Uh, and not a very good musician, you'll yes. know. Uh, uh, Kieran Mahollan, fiddle player. Mm-hmm. Uh, Roy Brown, bass. And a young musician from Belfast called Richard Lehman. Yes. Now, Roy and Richard have gone ahead on, uh, obviously, Blue Flax, to hut the, hut the cinders, hut the road. Uh, and a new band came out of it called Down and Out, yes. who actually are storming the country in bluegrass and doing exceptionally well. Worth time to hear them. Down and Out, is that what they're called? Yeah, Down and Out. Very good. Very good, talented musicians, and will do well. Do very well. Keep an eye out for that. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm trying to find out, do you know the name of the double player that the girls used on that album? Hold on a second. There's scant information here. Hold on a second. But there's a little. Hold on a second. There's a little booklet in here. Hold on a second. And, uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, dobro, 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 dobro. Oh, it doesn't say. Hold on a second. It doesn't say. Oh, it does. On that particular song, Dobro, um, Ted Ponsonby. Ted. Ted's a friend of mine. Ted from Letter Kenny. Yes. Ted yes, Ponsonby. Yes. Ted had his own band and his own uh, outfits for a long time. He's playing Dobro. There you go. Yep. There you go. I, I thought actually, we thought I could have been Colin Henry and Miller X no. Dobro player no, up here. Ted Ponsonby. Anyway, yep. listen. What, what? What? Are you in a current band? What's your band now? At the moment you're in. At the moment, no, we're not in a current band. We're trying to set up. Uh, believe it or not, a rockabilly. Okay. Band on the go at the moment, uh, working hard at it, and uh, a bit of bluegrass and abolition thrown into it. So, so hopefully the new genre will come out. Uh, a new genre from music is just okay. like sixty years old. All right. Then um, well, listen, we'll keep, put a new age to it. Keep the, keep the faith. And uh, yeah, well, this is it. You see, we're all we're all young lads now. You know, I, mean, uh-huh. I played with you in the nineteen seventies. Did you? Yeah. Where? <laughs> the Flamingo and Bomb. I mean, you there. did not. <laughs> You did not, did you? Yeah. Oh, my God. People realise how old I am now. And what about me? <laughs> All right, then, well, stop. I remember you were actually older than me. I ah, stop that. it. I, okay. I remember that, yeah. I'm... Oh, I only want to have the hair. I remember that. I had plenty of hair. I have a great story about the flamingo. I have a great story about oh, the flamingo. Oh, yeah, yes. And I was the one that was accused of taking that uh, little bird. <laughs> did you steal the flamingo, did you? No, you stood. <laughs> Go away, stop, stop now Thank you very much Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye He's accused me of theft I mean, why did he not pursue that? He said he played with you and and the the Flamingo in a band He's in the same band as you No, he's in the resident band, obviously He was in, why why did you not ask him that? Because I didn't didn't want to Why not? But you must must think of the the listeners I never think of the listeners The people who dance in the Flamingo band I never think of the listeners, you know that To hear the bands You know I never think of the listeners I know, but you should Did you see the article in our local newspaper today? No. Uh, called the Derry News, and it's, there's an article in it, and the headline said, "Shock withdrawal of the Jay Vases." <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> there's a very jazz festival and the Jaivases are this kind of show band that wear pink suits and I don't know what they're doing in a jazz festival but apparently there's great consternation because they've withdrawn from it. <laughs> no, they haven't. They're... they're, they're... They, they had, they're, 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 they're doing the opening session. Yeah, oh, th- uh, we're, they, we're grateful for that. Yes, but the other the other, the other other gigs that they were booked for, apparently they had to cancel them. What are we going to do without the Jai Vases at a jazz festival? What are we going to do? Well, how, how will we survive? What is it? Show band <laughs> music. <laughs> I played this yesterday. I'm going to play it again. It's called Deep Forest because it's really nice. No other reason. Those are doctored pygmies from the Congo and the Cameroon. When I say doctored pygmies, I don't mean medically. Mm-hmm. I mean electronically and musically. What this pe- people did, a couple of people from Amsterdam, actually, they went and recorded these uh, uh, indigenous people and bent it around a little bit and added some electronic stuff and added some beats and fantastic. It's called a Deep Forest. They are called a Deep Forest. That whole outfit is called Deep Forest, the whole shebang. And the album is called Deep Forest. There are other Deep Forest albums, but only get the first one. The first one is the best. Don't am I any... out tonight or am I... 
up early in the morning? Uh, I really don't know. Uh, you mean, I think what you mean is, am I broadcasting from this station tomorrow morning? Yes, you, yes I am. I will be here. It. So it means because, I it's good, because it's Good Friday. Yes, I can't go out tonight. Then. You can't go out tonight. You must be in here tomorrow morning because I will be here to respect the Saviour. Good Friday. Uh, me and my, this has gone too far. Look at this Titanic thing. Gentleman called You David. started it. I didn't start the Titanic. Yes, you did. It was all right, but it left here. Oh. It said here, my, me, and my mate, me and my mate invented the Titanic drink. It contains whiskey for the place it was built in. I didn't know it was built in Bush Mills. Port, because it left from one. Uh, Bourbon, because it was going to America and, of course, served over a large block of ice. The Titanic cocktail. Other messages before we leave. Hair today and gone tomorrow. When is your hairpiece program on? I'm not doing a hairpiece program. I'm doing a program about hair replacement therapy, HRT. Men on the verge of HRT. <laughs> Xylophones and vibraphones are similar in appearance but produce different sounds. Read my percussion website, for God's sake. Don't be so stupid. That's Casey Peters. Uh, could you please ring Jordy and ask him if he has any tips for the panda keepers in Edinburgh? I would say that Jordy might address the panda issue. Uh, indeed, phone the keepers and say, keep them lit until they get out. Also, Jerry, the BBC should record your programme for posterity or posterity because when you go to that big station in the sky, the rest of us will need something to keep us going. Amen to that. <laughs>